Good evening, gentlemen. I trust you're all ready for session one. I was ready from the moment I walked into the tavern. I'm super pumped for this. Nothing is going to bring me down. Hell yeah. Me and Donald with our super swole bro characters are going to rock this world. And just like that, I'm depressed. Don't be down, man. We're going to bro shake our way through any problems. Please stop talking like we're friends. You're right, Donald. We're not friends. We're... Don't say it. Family. I'm about to quit this campaign before it's even started. Before this campaign is over, you will see me in a different light. I don't think more light is going to improve that face of yours. We'll see. If you two are done having a moment, have you all decided on your campaign bonds? Got mine ready. Same here. Hashtag me too. Wait, what were we meant to do? Seriously. You had one thing this to do. This is going to be a long campaign. And when are you going to start way? paying attention? Damn Biden. Memory like a pasta strainer. Enough. I have heard all that I can stomach. So let me make one thing very clear. You are a team. In here, you'll support and help each other. No more insults. No more putting anyone down. Do you all understand? Yes, I'm sorry, Joe. It won't happen again. My apologies. You're asking a lot, Dungeon Master, but you are the boss. I'll keep any playful banter strictly to my character going forward. That sound good to you, Biden? Is, is he asleep? Joe. Joe. Russia Gate. What? Oh, yeah. Sorry I dozed off. I've got my campaign bond, Dungeon Master. It came to me in a dream. Okay, then. Without further delay, let us begin session one. Your story begins with the four of you traveling along a long, winding road from the deep south. You have hitched a ride with a traveling fruit merchant, as walking the journey would be considered foolish at best and dangerous at worst. You do not know each other, but have, one by one, taken a seat on the back of the trader's wagon. The sun is slowly setting, and you can hear the sounds of hundreds of birds flying overhead, away from the direction you are heading, the town of Greenest. Sitting side by side is Swolnald and Bama. Opposite is Sharpen and Gurmly. The space is tight and the smell of fresh fruit lingers heavily in the air. Out of the back of the cart, you can see the mountain path you had traveled. With the once warm sun now beginning to slowly descend behind it, you feel the cold temperature equally rise. It is late autumn, and the days have been growing shorter and much colder the further north you travel. Mm -hmm. The fruit merchant, whose cart you have hitched a ride on, hums a tune to himself as the horse trots along at a steady pace. What do we know about the fruit merchant? Very little. You have seen that he is a gnome of sorts. Elderly, with a thick white beard and ragged clothing. I call out to him, Hey Gramps, just how much further is it to Greenest? The smell of apples is getting on my nerves. The gnome stops his humming. You see above you in the canopy a small flap open, and his face is in view as he looks down on you with his tiny, slightly milky eyes. Longer than you'd be hoping for, but sooner than if you were walking. I look at the others. Any of you know how to steer a cart? I say we knock him out and speed this journey up. My nipples could cut parchment. Say that any louder and he may throw you off. Or worse, all of us if he thinks we're together. I'd like to see him try. I'd like to see this journey to Greenest in peace. The slow pace is relaxing. Let's keep it that way. And I grip the hilt of my long sword and look directly at Swolnald. Joe, give me an intimidation check and Donald an insight check to contest. Swolnald. You are unable to tell if Gurmley is bluffing or deadly serious. He looks as if he would not hesitate to use that sword against you if it were to mean he would get a peaceful ride. You accept that this would not be a wise time for conflict and fall silent. But my character would never- Nat fucking 20, sit your ass down and shut the fuck up. You know what, I'm impressed by the balls on this one. Okay, I say no more about the gnome and instead look to the little guy sitting next to me. What are you, a dwarf? I don't respond but instead stare out the back of the cart, watching the sun set with an expression of pain on my face. You a mute or something? The fifth night approaches, and with it, another visit into the darkness and despair. Well, you seem delightful. Is that why you're going to Greenest? You a comedic bard? What I am is a wizard and a gnome. Now acknowledging Swolnald and looking up at him with a stern look, my business is just that and none of yours, sir. Are all gnomes this touchy about answering questions, I say, as I turn my gaze onto Sharpen? 
Actually, gnomes are usually full of life and quite vibrant. Tell me, Sir Wizard, what ails you? I look from Swolnald to Sharpen, and my expression changes from stern back to pain. A riddle I seek an answer for. Every five nights I dream a most wicked dream. No, a nightmare of terrible things that I wish not to regale. They haunt me, and to speak of them in the waking world would make me feel worse than I already do. But I sense that the answers I seek reside in greenest. Very well. I shall ask no more of something that clearly troubles you. I, too, seek answers in greenest. I am looking for my childhood friend. I had heard she was taken there against her will by a strange cult. I shift uncomfortably at the word cult. What kind of cult do you speak of? They call themselves the cult of the dragon. I, I sit, sit up, up at, at the, the word, word dragon. dragon. You two know of them? I have heard of them. However, I'm traveling to Greenest to avoid them and lay low. I got into a fight with a gang several days ago, and I barely escaped with my life. Their last words I heard was, the cult of the dragon never forgets and always avenges. If what I hear is true, there may be more of them in Greenest. If they know of you, you may want to consider getting off and going elsewhere. I'll take my chances. I can hide pretty well if I need to, but thanks. Well, I don't know much about this cult, but I'm heading to Greenest by my good friend and mentor, Anthar Froom. You may have heard of him. Great guy. Champion of good. Slayer of the trolls of Twittar. He has tasked me with investigating rumors of dragon activity happening in Greenest. So if this cult is involved, they won't know what's hit them when the mighty Swolnald Stomp comes to town. Is that your name? Swolnald Stomp? You bet your skinny ass it is Elf. What's yours? Faxbitter. Sharpen Faxbitter. Have I heard of the name Faxbitter before? Roll me a history check. Man, these rolls suck. Okay, fine. What about you, tiny man? You got a name or should we just call you Midget Killjoy? I clench my fist and small flames begin to emerge and surround it. It would be very foolish of you to call me that again. You may refer to me as Bama, the wise, henceforth. As we're giving out our names, you may call me Gormley Whitebeard. I wasn't asking, but good to know, I guess. I look at Sharpen. You mentioned your friend was taken against her will. Do you know what this cult would want with her? I do not, but the reasons don't matter. What's important is that I save her and bring her back to her family. I noticed a hesitation when he said he didn't know why they took her. Can I tell if he is lying? Roll an insight check. With high insight, you can tell that Sharpen is not being completely honest with you, although it may just be due to you all being strangers and does not wish to delve deeply into the subject. Something about his hesitation makes you suspect otherwise. I say nothing and give no indication that I have seen through his lie but I make a mental note of this. The next hour passes in silence with the exception of the horse's hooves and the merchant's occasional humming. The sun has now disappeared and the moon has begun rising. You feel the cold in your chests and each breath you exhale lets out a stream of warm air that quickly evaporates. The flap above you opens up and the gnome's face appears. We'll be reaching greenest very soon just over this hill, and you'll be able to see it if you stuck your heads out the sides. It's cold enough inside. I'll wait until we're within the town and outside the entrance of the local tavern before I step one foot out there. How can you be this cold? Aren't Goliaths used to mountain temperatures? Yeah, obviously we are. We're great like that, but I grew up in the deep south and not in any mountains. I never built up a tolerance to the cold. The cold never bothered me, so I'll take a look. Keeping a firm grip on the cart, I lean out the side of it to get a view of the town. Let's have a strength check, Joe. Seriously, what is it with you and your fudge rolls? You hang onto the side with ease, and as you reach the peak of the hill, the cart comes to an abrupt stop. Can I see greenest? You do indeed see the town, but it is not a favorable scene to behold. It is almost too easy to see greenest as fire is raging from house to house. Although you are still some distance, there is no mistaking the sounds of screaming people. I call to the others. Everyone, Greenest is ablaze and the people are in trouble. I stand up. What are we doing just sitting here? Merchant, ride on with haste. The fruit merchant does not respond and the horse does not move on. Who's wishing they listen to me now, huh? Come on, Gramps, shit or get off the pot. We got some hero work to be doing. Don't. 
Don't you see it? Says the merchant in a terrified whisper. I jump out of the cart and look to the town. So do I. I also get out of the cart. You all stand there next to the cart and stare at the terrible sight of the burning town. You can all hear the screams of many people, the shouting of what may be soldiers, and tiny figures running here and there. Then you see it high up above the town, coming in and out of focus through the thick black smoke. A set of blue wings, a long scaly tail, a large open mouth, and a jet of bright flames erupting from it as it blasts another house. Greenest is being attacked by a dragon. 